Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, segment of Guildmaster Gaming. Uh, this time around, we are talking with screenplay writer Erica uh, Erica Stone and her screenplay, Axe to Grind. So we're going to start off by having Erica please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you'd like people to know about your screenplay. Great. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me on. This is uh, It's nice to be here and chatting with you. Um, yeah, so my name is Erica Stone. Like you said, um, I live in Utah um, in uh, in Daybreak. Um, my husband and I moved here three years ago from Alaska. We lived in Juneau, Alaska, um, which is a little bit funky. I moved up there. And I was an actor in a previous life. I moved up there for a play. Supposed to stay for three months, but fell in love with my husband, so I ended up staying for five years. Uh, and then we moved to Utah a few years ago, which is literally the polar opposite of Alaska. Um, so my screenplay has nothing to do with any of that. Um, my screenplay is called An Axe to Grind, um, and it is about a, a screenwriter, a female screenwriter who writes um, horrors, horror, horror films um, that flip the standard horror narrative on its head. So usually a lot of times there's, um, in horror films, there's women running around in their underwear, getting hacked to pieces. It's very titillating and um, it's kind of the the standard narrative in horror. Um, so uh, this this screenwriter in the in the in the script, her name is Kate Doncha. She writes scripts uh, that flips that heart, that narrative on its head. So it's a she writes scripts about a female serial killer, kind of like a female Freddy or Jason. Um, she has accolades for that. She has a whole franchise of these films, um, and then uh, a group of men's rights extremists find out about her work and uh, attend a Q&A that she's at and are uh, very threatening, obviously. Um, after she wins an award for her latest screenplay, she's taken hostage in her home by one of these um, particularly unhinged uh, men's rights extremists and the plot takes off from there. Taking what a lot of people might be used to and kind of flipping it completely over with a gender swap in a sense yes yes that well that's what she does in her scripts but then she's taken hostage because because of that this uh -huh. men's rights extremist basically wants to put her back in her place and he wants her to write uh, it's sort of like misery uh he wants her to change her scripts for him um or she's going to suffer the fate of the the characters in her films. so in her films the 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 protagonist anti-hero is this woman, Tess Damies, and she uh, basically dismembers men in her barn. Um, so the the when she's taken taken prisoner, taken hostage, um, the threat is that he will start doing this to her and her husband if she doesn't take her feminist horror script and make it into a misogynist sort of masterpiece is his idea. He wants her to <laughs> rewrite it rewrite her write her wrongs and make her scripts more standard standard horror narrative more what we're used to and definitely not with a female protagonist so i have to admit this could go a couple of ways just with the way you're describing it i mean you could have you know kind of like a slasher type setup or you know with the real gore or the the psychic thriller but it also seems like very easily you could give this a twist and throw it into a dark comedy Yes, <laughs> which is exactly what I did. A little bit of all of those things. It is a dark comedy. It has moments of 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 comedy to make the script a little bit lighter because it is very dark. Um, and there's less gore in it. So um, I actually wrote a screenplay prior to this that was about this character. That was what happened. The this test Amy's um, as the female antihero protagonist, um, and that was optioned last year. Uh, and I imagined what would happen if that took off. And I realized that I would likely receive, you, you know, threats um, as as often happens to women in the spotlight if if the film had taken off. Um, so I sort of like just imagined what would happen with that. And that script was very gory. It was a, a horror. This um, is a little bit more of a suspense thriller. There is some gore in it, but not quite as much as like a standard slasher horror film. It's much more suspense thriller with moments of punctuated violence and, and <laughs> some sure. comedy as well. <laughs> so you've given one part of the inspiration uh, as what you're talking about is kind of looking at it from your own experience of what that could mean for you. So it sounds like there's a larger implication there of of what you're addressing. 
Yeah, it's something that I see kind of over and over, and we see it um, sort of across the spectrum when women are in public spaces or when they're taking up space, when they're using their voices, um, they're cut down a lot of times. So I I just sort of, I, you know, as a writer, I just use my imagination all the time and my brain is always telling stories. Um, and I just, in looking at what happens to other women who are in the spotlight, and off the top of my head, I can think of I mean, many examples right now. Look at what's happening with the, I won't get into politics, but I will say the person who's who's running for president right now that is a woman, there are things that are said about her and she's harassed in ways that men aren't. It just doesn't, it just doesn't happen to men. We don't hold men to the same standards that we hold women to. And we won't use the same language around men that we'll use around, around women. Um, and then there's, you know, there's an example of, it was just even something as benign as like a sportscaster, a female sportscaster who was getting um, d death threats because she dared to like step into this male arena um, and uh, and be a sportscaster. Um, and there was a video that went viral a while ago of men just sitting down with women who were in the spotlight and they were reading comments back to the women that were said um, by men about them that were, I mean, just disgusting from threats of rape to violence. Um, so this happens all the time, which is why I think that this is sort of particularly relevant, especially right now in this, you know, in this cycle of politics where that is absolutely on the table um, and definitely something that's happening. Um, so I just, uh, so that's my, that was my jumping off point and why I think it's sort of relevant right now. Mm -hmm. well Very that makes nice a lot of sense stuff. i mean there is a lot of that kind of going on and and not just like you say it's it's pervasive throughout of all of our our culture and society so uh very tough yeah. to film on that so yeah you're you're kind of let's kind of looking back over you know what it is you're saying that you're into the writing side of it have you thought about moving forward and maybe doing more in film besides just being a, a writer yeah that is, of course, the dream. Yes, I would love to. I've already that, that I've I have two fully developed scripts. I have another family drama that I'm writing right now, and then I have about uh, a backlog of sort of ten different ideas from biopics to something that's a little bit in the sci-fi realm. Um, so absolutely, I would love to be able to get those made. That's always the trick. Um, with these films, both of them have the scripts have placed in um, multiple contests. One of them, the, an axe to grind, just won uh, first place, and it also placed as a second rounder in Austin. So I'm going to go to the Austin Film Festival and Film Quest and soak up as much information as I can get. That's um, that would be the next new step for me. And I know there's lots of different paths to get there. So I'm looking forward to talking to other filmmakers and um, learning about everybody's paths and how they do that. And because that isn't something that I've done before. I worked as an actor in the industry in uh, it, both as a theater actor and film actor, but not on the other side of things, actually getting things made. So I'm really looking forward to um, attending these festivals and hopefully learning as much as I can. And I would love to see either of these made. I already have them. Obviously, um, I've watched them both in my head multiple times. I have them all. I have a vision, so it would be great to see that come to fruition. <laughs> so kind of looking back over your past, you know, you're now getting into film, writing scripts and everything. What drew you into becoming both maybe just a storyteller in general and film? Yeah, I think I always have, I mean, I've been acting basically since I came out of the womb. So story has always been really, uh, just really important to me. When I grew up writing short stories and I really liked, I liked that. And I actually, I wish that I had sort of continued to pursue that. I, I ended up going to school for, uh, I double majored in biology and psychology. And looking back at it, I wish that I had stayed more on the story side of things. I love, I love language. And these happened um, kind of because they couldn't not. I just had these ideas and I was working full time. Um, so I was writing on just the weekends basically, but 
the stories, I know this sounds kind of weird, but the stories almost told themselves that they had this kernel of an idea. And to be honest, I, I feel almost like I didn't, they just had to be told. I almost feel like I didn't write them. Like I sat down and they came out. I would walk and like watch the the films in my head and then I would just write down what I saw when I got home. So I think it's it's not necessarily what drew me to stories. It's just that they're there and they kind of came bubbling out of me. I almost feel like I didn't have a choice. Like I, I had to write them down. Yeah. And I, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about them, which is, I guess, like, I mean, it's nice when inspiration hits like that and you just feel like you're the vessel for something, I guess. I don't know. The concept of the muse as it speaks. Exactly, yes. I, I have one friend, he goes, this one book he wrote, he goes, I didn't write the book. All I did was transcribe it. Yeah. So. It feels like that when you are in a good place. And I had, for the first script, I sort of, I had this idea about a female anti-hero protagonist, this like Freddie or Jason, or, or even like, you know, a, a Ted Bundy, because there was that film that came out about Ted Bundy. But this other, this this female character, we always see these films about, you know, men hacking women to pieces and then they, you know, or documentaries or whatever. And they always cut to people and they say, he was, he was such a nice boy. He was so charming. And I wanted to flip that around and do that for a woman. And then I also had this idea of um, people being kept alive and dismembered, but like sort of the, an idea of, of the, uh, you know, if any investigation was happening, people assumed that the the people were dead because they were finding limbs all over the place. And then I realized the two stories were the same for the original script, which was called To Bits and Pieces. That's the the horror. And after I put the two stories together, I, I literally, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Anything I was doing, I had my phone with me and I would text myself like, oh, this is how this comes together. It just, it, it came to me like, yes, like your friend said, it, I didn't feel like, necessarily that I wrote it but that it was written through me which is kind of a fun experience I guess it's it's I've had that happen too on a short note it was just like just pour it out and you're just going wow there it is so I I understand that feeling it's a great feeling now axe to grind and you said the prequel to this is to bits and pieces are both yes. within the horror genre but you mentioned yeah, so to, go ahead yeah no no go ahead I interrupted you sir I was going to say they're both in the horror genre but you mentioned that you also have written stuff in other genres. So what would you say is probably your preferred genre to write in? Well, because I finished two scripts in the horror um, or suspense thriller, I would maybe say that because that's what's come out of me, come bubbling out of me as my first two feature length scripts. Um, I used to, I, I wrote with a group called Native Voices and we did sort of like shorter, it was for uh, like stage plays. Um, and mo most of those were dramas um, and uh, and I really enjoyed that as well. Um, I have a biopic in my head. I'm not gonna say who it's about or what it's about because it's not out of my head yet. But, um, <laughs> but um, that is really interesting to me. And I'm in the middle of writing a family drama which is harder, I think. It is a little bit more, it's meatier and it's um, it, it's a little bit more challenging to write, but I am enjoying it. I would say it's not falling out of me as quickly as horror or, or um, suspense thriller, but, um, but I'm excited to try a new genre as well. Okay, so I'm gonna flip that a little bit. What was your draw to horror? Um, I, you know, I guess like, I just love a really good horror film and I'm very particular about the kind of horror that I like. I, I don't actually necessarily like the slashers. I like a good um, kind of intellectual or like sort of a, 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 a um, something that just really gets into your brain. So uh, Midsummer is one of my favorite horrors. I don't know if you've seen it, but it is, um, excruciating. It is so disturbing. It's not super violent except for a couple of scenes, but it is so disturbing. I watched it with my husband and, and, um, it finished and I, I laughed because the ending is so just, uh, 
it's just disturbing. And I ended up just laughing out of sort of nervousness at the end. And I said, I don't think I like that. And then I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, I loved that. And I love films that do that, especially horror films that like get into your head that are, you know, just more sort of of that, that kind of in, in that vein as a horror film. So I think that drew me to it. It's just sort of a fun thing to write. And it was a really fun thing to flip. So one of the things I wanted to see was this like this female anti-hero protagonist. You know, I have friends who are super into Friday the 13th um, or Nightmare on Elm Street or any of those. And they 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 just sort of adore Jason, Freddie. They even though they're they're the bad guys in the film, they love them. And they post about them all the time. And there was something really interesting to me about that because there isn't there isn't a female version of that for women to like. So I wanted to create that, and that was in the the first the, the first one. The second one I wrote about is about the screenwriter. It's not about me, but it is about the screenwriter. What I imagined the, what would happen to the screenwriter. Um, who wrote this horror, which hasn't hasn't been, um, you know, produced the, the this horror with a female Jason or Freddy or whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. I think the so culture, that's yeah. Okay, go ahead. Oh no, sorry, <laughs> that's just what drew me to horror. Sorry, I was just okay. concluding. I just what were you going to say? I was going to say kind of like you were talking about the the idolization of the villains. The closest yes. that we see with that for women is probably in the superhero genre. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, like Harley yeah. Quinn and Poison Ivy and Catwoman. Yes. Yes. I guess to some extent there is there is that there. I would say maybe it's a little well, I mean it's obviously a different genre, but yes, I wanted something like that that where a woman gets I, I just kind of I wanted I wanted a woman to be a villain, yes, but also she's the protagonist in the same way that Jason is the pro or anti hero protagonist. People are still rooting for him. They love, they love Jason. They love Freddie. They love Chucky. Like, you know, they're. <laughs> so I just wanted that. I wanted that into bits and pieces. And then, like I said, an axe to grind is about what happens to this poor screenwriter who dares to kind of like step out of that horror narrative. Okay. So we've kind of gotten what, what drew you into film, what kind of draws you to horror. And it sounds like you've, you've already told us kind of like what projects you're working on next. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of jump a little bit there and say, if you had a dream project that you could work on, you know, what would that be? What would you be doing? Honestly, that my dream project right now would be to get that first script produced to bits and pieces. Like I said, Tess Jamie is the, is the anti-hero protagonist in that. I love her. She's she's an awful, messy, uh, very funky character. She owns a nursery school and she is a serial killer by night. She's hacking up men in her barn and going and singing preschool songs the next day with <laughs> with her kids. Um, in, with her kids in preschool, she doesn't have any of her actual own kids. Um, and so I've I've passed that around to some actor friends and. Um, a lot of them have really liked it. It's a, oh, all of them have really liked it. It's, it's a meaty role for a woman. Um, and I, I just have a real soft spot in my heart for this character and her journey. And I, I have every minute imagined in my head. So I, that would be my dream project is to get that produced. Um, and then of course, an axe to grind, um, which is sort of the, um, unconventional sequel to that uh, about the screenwriter that I mentioned. Um, and then the next project that I'm working on is a totally different, it's called Uncycling. It is um, a, a family drama um, about way, this is much, much, uh, I guess it's not as fun for sure. It's about figuring out ways to um, get out of the the cycle of of abuse and there's all different ways to do that you can choose education you can choose therapy you can choose not having children um and it it kind of explores all those avenues in in terms of because abuse tends to be passed on for generations and generations and then at some point hopefully people um can break it that is um i'm i think maybe about 40 percent through writing that that would be really fun to 
um, to get produced as well. But it, like I said, a, a lot less fun in terms of, it's not a fun movie. It's a little bit dark, but that would be, I would love for that uh, to come to fruition as well. All right. So kind of getting back to Axe to Grind, it sounds like you're just kind of getting out on the festival circuit at the at the contest with Austin now uh, Film Quest coming up. Uh, is there any other dates that you have already that you might be able to share with people of where they could meet you? Um, right now, it's just I'll be in Austin um, from October 23rd to the 28th for the Writers Conference and hopefully meeting lots of people there. This is the first time that I've been to Austin, uh, either to the city or to the film festival. Super excited about to find out about that. And I just found out um, a few weeks ago when they let everybody know. Um, and then I'll be at Film Quest from uh, the 29th of October through the end of that. Um, I've submitted, I've, I finished the script, um, I guess, March of this year and then did some heavy editing as you need to do. Um, so I've there it's it's placed in another in a number of other competitions it won first place in wiki the fastest screenplay competition um but they don't have a festival for that um and then was a semi-finalist for story pros um and a couple of others um but uh it's in the running for still a bunch more that i haven't heard back from yet so um uh stay tuned i don't know where else it will go but hopefully um I'll hear from some others as well and some fellowships and stuff like that. Sounds like it's doing very well out there already. So, you know, good luck with that. So thank you. Yeah. So we're kind of to a point of kind of wrapping up because I'm not sure where you know, I think we've covered pretty much everything, but I will ask a couple of, you know, I want to ask always a personal question. People, you know, there's a lot of intensity in writing. I know that from my own and, you know, in filmmaking, there's a lot of intensity there, but so what do you like to do to unwind to kind of take a break away from it? Um, I really like whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to do a lot of the, I mean, outside of writing, I do a lot of my writing while I'm walking. So um, that's one thing I walk I mean, probably 10 miles a day. I just like to, that that opens up the creativity for me. And there's actually some scientific research that shows when you're using both sides of your body in that way, you kind of unleash creatively. Um, so I do that. I like to make things. I make, um, I like to make fermented hot sauces. It's not that interesting, but um, that is has, is a really fun hobby for me. Um, I love doing anything outdoors. My husband and I camp a lot. Um, we paddleboard, kayak, hike, you know, all the regular Utah things that we all do. Um, those are, and I love to read, of course. I love reading. Okay, great stuff. Uh, so, you know, just remind everybody, come out to the festival, support the independents. It's great stuff. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to a final call out. But as we're moving into that, I'm going to, I ask a little bit different question. So you're now a screenwriter kind of wanting to get into filmmaking. But, yes. Uh, and you're probably just kind of starting. It sounds like your journey into that area. But yeah, if, but it, I know how it happens. As soon as it's that you're in there, someone's bound to come and say, hey, I want to be a filmmaker. What advice would you give them? <laughs> um. I think, well, I'm not doing it yet, so I don't know if I would follow my advice, um, but I think the, the the bit of success that I've had with the scripts has come from just having dedicated time and also finding my own, I've read a lot about like, you know, sort of what people do and some of it like to write or to get into the creative space and some of it, I think, um, I look at it and I go that that like that wouldn't work for me. So knowing like learning what what processes are, what people do, but then also being true to yourself and doing finding the thing that works for you to be able to sit down and write because some of the things that people do just they're not there. You know, the cards thing, people put cards up. That is not the way that my brain works. Um, I like to ha have an outline I've found so I can just refer to it and go back and say, what is after the scene? And, oh yeah, this is what I decided. So I would say just like, you know, being true to yourself, 
setting aside time to for yourself to be able to to do that and then also not being precious about it so like i said i i write when i walk i let my brain kind of go and at any time i was obviously we all have our phones with us all the time i'm constantly texting myself ideas i don't know if that works for other people but when it hits i know i'm going to forget it i will like so write everything down that's what i'm saying <laughs> You know, you <laughs> mentioned that Kevin J. Anderson, the author who lives, he lives in Southwestern Colorado. Uh -huh. and, uh, where I was listening to him talk and he was saying he writes almost all of his work while he's out walking and hiking. And <laughs> he has a recorder and he just starts transcribe. He just talks it through and just keeps talking through his story as he goes through. And that's how he does his first draft. That is amazing. And that's basically, that's kind of what I do, except for I don't record. I just text myself and then I get home and put it all down on paper. But, and that's what I mean. That might not work for other people. It might work for a lot of people, but finding that, that's what, that is the thing that really works for me. So that's, yeah, that's find what works for you. Yep. That's a great advice. I think that applies for any level of writing that people are doing uh, in any area yeah. or actually any creative aspect. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as an actor, I had certain um, certain th things that worked for me and things that didn't. And other actors did different, you know, had a totally different processes. Um, so I don't think there's really like a one size fits all to get you into that creative space. It's just finding out what does get you into that creative space and doing that as much as possible. OK, so I'm, I know I'm going to be able to see you down at Film Quest. Uh, yeah, so we're all going to we're both going to be there. It sounds like for pretty much the duration of the uh, the event. Yeah, I'll be there starting on the 29th because I'll be in Austin before that. So yeah. the 29th through the end, I will be at everything that I possibly can. And um, I'm super excited because of two years ago, I was only able to attend some of it. I was working full time at the time and I would have to like run over and go to one of the events I wanted to go and leave. And I always was like, oh, I just want to stay here and hang out with these cool people. Um, but, uh, this year, once I'm here on the 29th, I can stay for the, the, be at everything and just really, you know, be absorbed into all of it. I, I do understand what you're saying there. The first year I attended film quest as a reviewer, uh, for a local magazine, I was working full time at a day job. So I'd get up and go to work at six in the morning and then work a full day and then go to film quest and watch movies and one of them, even up till the midnight movies, and then drive oh. home. And I did that for an entire week. Uh, it's Sorry. so hard. It's really hard. And the worst <laughs> is when you have to leave and you're like, oh, there's all this great stuff happening. There was one time we were doing like a, this like speed meet and greet with everybody there. I don't know if you were there for that. Yep. It was like you had two minutes to talk with everyone. And like halfway through, I was like, I've got to go back to work, <laughs> which was such, it was such a bummer because it was just such a great experience. And they do such a good job of putting together just films and experiences and labs and meet and greets. And just, it's, it's really nice. So I'm excited that I'm just going to go camp out in Provo for about a week <laughs> um, for a film class. I'm super excited about it. It'll be really fun. And I, I'm glad I won't have to leave it. Okay, so we're looking forward to meeting you up with you again there because we did meet a couple of years ago there when yeah. you were there last. So I'm going to close up with one final thing for you, and that is you have a final moment to say whatever you'd like, make any call outs you'd like, make any commentary you'd like. It's all yours. Oh, the pressure. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just want to say um, thank you to you for um, for having me to, to do this. This is um, actually my first interview about this new script. So I actually learned a little bit today, um, which was really nice. Um, I'm looking forward to Film Quest. So thanks, thanks to Film Quest for um, introducing me to lots of great people that I met, including you. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing everybody there. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you, Erica. And everybody, remember, please get out and support the independents. I mean, that's where a lot of creativity is happening. There's a lot of new stuff coming up, be it film, be it book, uh, you know, all the way around. The creative people out there are just pretty amazing. And if you like what we're doing here, please like this, share it out. And if you want to subscribe, you know, do that too, because that helps us do more. Thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Erica. Thanks so much.